you to FY25 result conference call hosted by ICICI Securities. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Anirudh Zoshi from ICICI Securities. Thank you and over to you, sir. Yeah, thanks, Tanmaya. On behalf of ICICI Securities, we welcome you all to Q2 FY25 Results Conference Call of Kansai Neurolac Paints. We have with us today Senior Management represented by Mr. Anuj Jain, Managing Director, Mr. Prashant Pai, Director Finance, and Mr. Jason Gonsalves, Director, Corporate Planning, IT and Materials. Now I hand over the call to the management for the initial comments on the quarterly performance, and then we will open the floor for question and answer session. Thanks and over to you, uh, Anup sir. Thank you, Anirudh, and good morning, everyone. I hope uh, you all had a good and prosperous Diwali uh, with family and loved ones. Our greetings to all of you and best wishes for New Year. I'm grateful for your continued support and interest in our company, and thanks for joining this call for Consign Airlock for quarter two of financial year 24 25. Uh, we have uh, already submitted a presentation, and in that presentation, if you go through one slide, uh, you know, which, which basically talks about uh, the diversified portfolio what we have. And that slide basically talks about that there is a bit of Neuralag in everyone's life. It also says that we meet all customer needs and we have been adding more portfolio, which also we have shown on the slide. Uh, with this uh, diversified portfolio, we mitigate risk, which you know associated with relying on any single segment and ensure steady progress. As we have been speaking in the past, that we remain a number two consumer brand, and our strength is technology, Japanese technology, uh, leadership in automotive and powder coating, and in decorative, we have been leveraging Jingle and Paint Plus, taking the advantage of, again, Japanese technology, that also we have been doing. And this basically gives us a combination of logic and magic, because logic is uh, the technology, and magic is all about uh, our jingle and the connect uh, with the consumer. If you look at the current business environment, uh, the auto demand is stable. Uh, the quarter one was good, quarter two slight moderation, but October was good. Infrastructure growth and good monsoons and easing of crude prices. So the challenges are geopolitical and uh, rupee depreciation. Just to give you some highlights of uh, you know our industrial business. In automotive, as I said, demand was moderate in quarter two, but on the back of our initiatives, we did better, and uh, we increased market share in automotive. October, I think, uh, the last one week, 10 days, whatever was reported in the channels or news, I think the sale was good, and I think that gives us the hope that even in the coming quarter, I think the demand could be a little better than quarter two. Our approach, we continue to focus on uh, technologically superior products, uh, which is in line with our strategy and have been launching expanding sustainable technologies to reduce resource use and carbon emission. So the new segment which we entered, basically to expand the size of the market, is a seam sealer underbody alloy wheels, and we have been increasing our salience uh, in these areas also. So what the new products, you know, that gives us the edge uh, in this automotive market. One is the high solid, uh, you know, system which basically give high aesthetics, also the lower VOC, the lower carbon emission, shorter drying time, you know, that enhances the productivity at the customer and the cost effective, the less evaporation of paint during the drying process. So some of these technologies, you know, we have been expanding. We are also expanding the polyurethane monocoat system, uh, which is against the conventional system, conventional system two coat, and uh, this also helps in terms of enhancing the productivity and also the other parameters. Uh, we also developed some excellent corrosion resistance coatings for in the areas of commercial vehicles and tractors, basically to overcome field failures of paint peel off due to severe conditions during puddling operation in combination with fertilizers. So these are some of the examples of the new technology and there are many more. 
if you look at electrical vehicles the penetration in the four wheeler is just about 2 to 3% and uh, in two wheeler it's about 7 8% so it is uh, going up but uh, with the slower space three wheeler is more than 50% and our reach penetration in the electrical vehicle is as good as the conventional system and we are holding the higher market share in this segment also in the auto refinish where our market share is uh, low uh, you know that the approach was to continue to put uh, uh, our systems in a class body shops and we are expanding that you know because that's where the premium business is there and we are continuously expanding that business the other part of industrial which is a performance coating or you know the liquid and powder business so our strategy and focus was on performance coating business there and there we have taken actions which we have spoken in the past also one that we have expanded our business development team and feet on ground uh, basically to uh, you know it's like a product management or business development segment by we have chosen the segment and they are getting the approval and uh, you know matching the product with the customer requirement because they are generally you have to have a customized kind of product to satisfy the requirement of the customer so that's what we are doing there is also a large amount of business in high performance coating which happens through industrial dealers and they basically cater to mid size or low size you know industries uh, that's the initiative we are taking and we are spending our distribution reach to reach out these small industries and our salience of this channel you know has gone up and this is this is one segment of the business which is better placed in terms of the relatively cross margin also the one approach was approvals in high end coatings for say example railways bridges oil and gas uh, through use of new technologies and some of these technologies are like chloropolymer anti carbonation so some of the pictures what we are given in our uh, presentation if you can see that uh, you know these coatings have been applied in mumbai coastal road and uh, bullet train so these are like bridges you know that where we have applied anti carbonation coatings so anti carbonation coating one that it is more durable rather you know that it uh, resist the dust and you know the, the emission which set on the surfaces and therefore it, uh, it helps it I think better in terms of looks also. Uh, we have also uh, applied, you know, this uh, chloropol polymer coatings on Trans Harbor, which is popularly known as uh, Atal Setu. Uh, chloropol is a very high-end, durable coating, you know, which gives a life of about 30 years. So this gets applied on the steel structures, you know, which are there on the Atal Setu. So that's what we have done. Vande Bharat also we spoke about, and we have painted, you know, many trains of Vande Bharat. So if you see uh, the trains uh, which basically show now orange color, blue color, white color, all that is uh, Marilac. Most of it is painted by Marilac. And this is also high-end epoxy systems and you know, the top coat of some clear, you know, that also keeps it, you know, clean and aesthetically uh, looks good. So some of these technology which we have been saying that in the high-performance coating two, three years back, we have created some low-end business and the high-end business we are entering. And we are make, making a strong traction there. And based on these initiatives in the performance coating business, we have done well and uh, witnessed uh, a very strong traction and also have a strong pipeline. If we talk about some of more new products in performance coating, uh, the the you know, IP net coating, which is interpenetrating coating, we got the approval from Mumbai Metro line. And also we developed uh, ROHS, you know, which is uh, the hazardous, uh, you know, which is basically that how to make it non-hazardous and less hazardous compliance coil coating. So that approval also we got from some of the key customers. Uh, therefore, you know, based on these technologies and the product launches, our the premium salience in the performance coating is uh, going up. Some of the segments which we are catering through performance coating, from I said like bridge, windmill appliances, construction equipment, helmets, and also in the powder category, we are like in the premium. So overall our market share is good and we are market leader. But in the premium segment, we have a potential to improve our market share. So there we are focusing on rebar coatings, pipe coatings, alloy wheel and construction uh, equipments. Coming to uh, decorative, uh, some of the those drivers which we have taken in decorative, uh, one was uh, related to a paint plus that how do we differentiate our products in the market and that also lead to some kind of premiumization. So, so far, uh, we have introduced more than 25 products uh, and 10 were added in the current year. So, total number of products are more than 25 and their salience is continuously uh, going up. It is almost in the double digit range now. 
uh, all the new products what we have introduced in decorative in last three years they are contributing uh, more than 10 percent to our sales and uh, you know, overall if you look at this quarter or ytd the premium did better and we had a degrowth in uh, the product like patti and uh, distemper about the new product which uh, i would like to mention here in fact uh, last year when we had uh, the in person uh, meeting with uh, all of you we have demonstrated this product but some of the new products what we introduced one is the texture range uh, where there are very high end kind of italian or different kind of finishes uh, we have just introduced a product called no dust in category like excel uh, which is a good uh, proposition at a good you know, value proposition uh, we also launch a range of and now we have expanded in the quarter two the wow whites so in fact you know in many of the market the 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 acceptance or the penetration of white shade is very very high and uh, we have launched in multiple product the wow white these are best of the whites and also this product has a coverage which is higher by uh, 15% so this range also we are you know expanding and this is definitely our exclusive range uh, which i think that customer and market will like there are some products which were introduced in construction chemicals and wood finishes in wood finishes we have introduced two component polyurethane product at a very attractive value proposition and that will help us to expand our business in the wood finishes so this these are some of the details of the new products uh, if i talk about the new business which is basically uh, which uh, has premium wood finishes and construction chemical and waterproofing their continuously our growth is strong and now our sales from new business has got into a double digit so i think uh, here in fact uh, we feel that our growth is uh, better than the market growth maybe the salience is still lower but i think gradually we are uh, picking up also in uh, project business where we uh, expanded our footprint and now we are available in more than 75 plus towns there also in fact we are continuously growing in double digit and uh, doing better than the market and our salience uh though the it's uh, under index but continuously it is going up and i think uh, as a matter of time that will be able to catch up with the market salience also in this business the other part of uh, decorative strategy was focusing on influencer and services so and two years back we introduced next gen painting services and uh, the architect program which we called illuminate i illuminate p that program we have introduced and there in fact we are making up uh, continuous uh, progress now and uh, as of now in fact our um, about about 3% or more than 3% business contribution has started coming from uh, this initiative alone uh, this initiative especially the services uh, today in fact we expanded and we are serving a large number of cities the architect registration program continuously quarter on quarter and we are increasing the number of architects which are enrolled with us So in terms of secondary tracking, because if you remember and recall that we said that one of uh, the focus chain in the creative is that how do we track secondary sales so that you know that we have more control in the business. So almost the categories, you know, that's uh, where we run the painter incentives and painter program, mostly in the emulsion categories. There, in fact, uh, today the secondary tracking has crossed more than 40 percent. Uh, number of painters are expanding, and today we have a, a good number of painters, you know, with us. and the team feet on street who is in connecting with this painter demonstrating the product and helping them out to get the business and sites at the dealer front distribution front uh, basically to give a better retail experience we started the initiative called uh, next gen shopy and shop in shop uh, in fact we have also introduced the system called uh, nix which is you know basically a kind of spectrophotometer it's uh, you know ai enabled where it is able to advise and give consulting in terms of the shade combinations what customer can go for we got a got a good response from the customers and today uh, the next in shopy along with this shopping shop model about 250 are already in place in the market in terms of general distribution expansion we have added uh, about 2000 plus uh, dealers and uh, we are continuously looking for the expansion and we have objective in mind for the year as of now we are on track related to that so coming to the general performance you know for the quarter the top line was up by around 1% the beta is down by around 20% and uh, gross margins uh, down by 1.7% if we compare with the quarter 3 of last year but if we compare with the quarter uh, quarter 
then put down by 3%. There are primarily three reasons for that. One is the change in revenue mix, because as you know that uh, we are generally 55% degradative, 45% industrial, but because the industrial growth is higher in the quarter, so uh, the the mix is in favor of industrial, and in industrial, the material cost is higher. So that's, that's one main reason why there is a change in the gross margin. The second reason is the residual impact of price reduction, which happened uh, last year. So that is second reason. And third is some material inflation. So material inflation has continued till August. From September, we are seeing softening of raw materials, but that impact is there. So, and partly we have been able to mitigate through cost reduction efforts, but there is some impact on material uh, inflation also. In terms of the outlook, you know, uh, what we see uh, reporting from RBI bulletin and uh, you know some news, uh, rural trend and uh, rural demand is trending upwards. So as of now, if you look at quarter one, quarter two, we can see some sign, but difficult to comment. In industrial, in two wheeler, definitely we are seeing uptick in rural. But I think post good monsoons and which will help uh, the harvesting and crop, I think uh, this is what RBI bulletin says that rural demand is trending upwards. And they also say that urban continues to hold firm, which is a little contrary to some of the news which we are hearing today that urban slow down. But I think we'll have to wait and watch. Uh, the next quarter would be a right indicator that what is happening. Investment activities remain buoyant with government expend expenditure rebounding from a contraction in previous quarter. So that's a good signal for us, you know, that in the second half, if this activity picks up, it will help, uh, you know, our project business and also the performance coding business. So the other uh, indicators are like, you know, in passenger vehicle, uh, the demand moderated in quarter two, but uh, based on the uh, last week's sale of October, the inventory has come down in the market, and therefore we feel that in the quarter three, demand could be better than quarter two. Uh, Two-wheeler demand is being stable, double-digit demand, and we hope this uh, momentum will be maintained. Performance quoting, as I said, that based on the investment and government expenditure, we expect this market will continue to grow. And based on our initiatives, you know that and the good order pipeline will continue to do well. Raw material prices, uh, which uh, have seen inflationary trend in uh, you know, August, uh, towards the end of last quarter, we started seeing softening, and that's why it can give some advantage, uh, you know, going going forward. So this is uh, what I had to say uh, on the quarter two and some of the actions and initiatives what we have taken, and I'm happy to answer your questions now. Thank you very much, sir. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking questions. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Avnish Roy from Novama. Please go ahead. So sure, thanks. Uh, my first question is on the competition. So previous quarter you had said that uh, your confidence level is higher uh, than what it was uh, before six months, and now further three months has happened. So, so, so if you could update on uh, how competitive uh, dynamics are currently. And second is on Axonable, clearly uh, some form it will get sold either fully or uh, partly. So essentially we are seeing one large player like uh, Grassim enter and then one, uh, the number four player uh, kind of exit. So what will be your uh, read across in terms of competition from a, uh, say one year or two years later, once the sale happens and one thing stabilized, do you see essentially that uh, worst of uh, the competition is behind it is consolidation in that case? Hi, Arnish. Thanks for the question. So, Arnish, on this new entry or, you know, uh, this competition, I think the statement remains same because uh, uh, six months, nine months have passed and we are seeing some correction. Uh, mostly, uh, you know, the impact is different geography to geography. Uh, they are more into the numeric reach as of now. Uh, I think it is still early to comment on that, uh, you know, uh, to determine that how it will play out. Uh, we are monitoring the trend. But uh, our understanding is that such uh, moves stabilize over period over a period of time, and I think our objective is to remain resilient and keep delivering value under this situation. But I think, uh, as we said earlier, also I think it's a slow pace. This industry, uh, you know, that to build uh, the the distribution, the painter, the brand, it takes time. I think that is what is being demonstrated in the uh, market today. And I also still believe, as I said earlier, also that 
overall unfortunately for last uh, you know few quarters the demand uh, scenario is down but i'm sure it's a short term you know kind of thing the sublip because never ever we have seen uh, demand standing low for such a long period i'm sure that uh, later or sooner the demand will come back and in that situation the size of the industry is good and more number of uh, players you know that uh, help in terms of driving innovation it raise the standards and expand the market so i think that way it's a good scenario but uh, whatever statement we have made we stand on that that particular thing and i think based on our initiative we are we are clear that how it is panning out but uh, we would like to wait for some more time on your second question as of now not much of comment you know because uh, all that is there in media as of now that we have not received uh, uh, you know much information about it so as of now we you know it's a little premature and you know uh too early for us to comment on that yes, so one or two specific uh, follow up here uh, so in terms of uh, disruption from uh, the new players uh, have you now seen uh, any uh, big impact you did say some traction in some markets but in terms of anything disruptive in terms of uh, what they are doing that is one second again uh, confidence level last quarter you say it was higher than 6 months back will it be fair to say that uh, versus 3 months back confidence level is similar for you Yeah. in terms of fighting competition yes at least so when i said like this you know that obviously it's natural to experience some impact when company enter in this manner but there is no disruption and when you talk about the confidence and confidence is going up and up only okay and what is driving that so driving one is that the initiatives what we have started you know that uh, segment by segment when we are seeing you know the impact of that the second you know that uh, earlier also we used to talk about that if there is a pricing strategy a different pricing strategy which is taken in the market whether how much it will work how much it will put pressure on the you know their existing companies having seen all that having seen the response from the customers from the dealers from the painters i think that's what give you more confidence my last question will be on the uh, volume growth uh, expectation so the number two player has uh, given kind of expectation that q3 it will be high single digit volume growth for them and uh, q4 most likely double digit and they have been generally uh, claiming to be uh, gaining market share and uh, data also seems uh, to suggest that uh, now other paint companies are having a more uh, uh, cautious uh, uh, response and clearly there is a urban slowdown Uh, if i see from a fmcg perspective there is a very clear uh, indication of that so would uh, what will be your expectation of the industry or for your you are not asking a guidance uh, i do understand marriage days are high but uh, uh, these things can get uh, postponed i do understand it always comes back so pent up demand can come back say in fy26 but from h2 perspective would you also expect that industry could grow on a whole on the full 6 months uh, say close to high single digit volume growth for the industry So, Abhishek, uh, my comment is that uh, definitely the the demand will pick up. There will be uptick in demand. If we talk about for the month of October, uh, October Diwali was very early. But if we uh, say from the Shara to Diwali, those I think from 12th of uh, October to 31st of October, those 18 days sale, retail sale in the market was good. And November, December is a good the marriage season. So, on back of it, you know, we definitely feel the demand. will go up and gradually it will pick up so third quarter it will be better fourth quarter it will be further better i would not like to comment on the number as of now that how much it is i think quantum is to be seen but definitely we also feel that demand is going to go up so thanks sir that's all for my side thank you abhish thank you very much the next question is from the line of mehir shah from nomura please go ahead Hi, Hi, sir. Hi, sir. How are you, sir? Thank you for taking my question. Um, so, with the change in industrial portfolio by entering into the high-end premium, uh, you know, segment paints in auto and performance coating, and given last year you had exited the low-margin products, uh, can you share how much improvement was witnessed in the industrial margin? And uh, now, uh, you know, uh, with the saliency of the new launches, uh, you know, new products uh, increasing. Uh, ideally, they should have increased, but Uh, can you also share what is the difference, uh, you know, uh, in margins versus deco and industrial paints currently? So, me generally, you know, one is that uh, the margins of decorators are always higher, but uh, in case of industrial, with the change in the strategy, you know, and technology, the product, the premium. So, if you remember, you know, if you see the history, 
uh, one that industrial used to be more cyclical and second there used to be high volatility when it comes to the margins so what we are able to do with, with these changes one that you know that it gives the confidence that uh, the company can reduce the volatility and on the sustainable basis you know one can maintain the double digit margin so i think with this steady change this is what we are able to do so some of the dynamics of the industrial market remain which we used to handle earlier also now also but with these changes i think we can produce more sustainable results so that is uh, that is one thing and what was the second question is uh, yeah, you know the difference between industrial auto used to be about 5% uh, has that uh, decreased uh, with all these changes Marginally, marginally you can say, but uh, they said that generally, if you see at the gross margin level, always uh, uh, decorative margins would be higher. Uh, but you know, when it comes to the EBITDA level, because in decorative, there would be expenditure on marketing, sales promotion, and all those things. So I think at the EBITDA level, the you know it has reduced. Got it. Understood. Uh, secondly, sir, uh, uh, would you still hold your guidance for maintaining the margins for the full year? Uh, and how should one think about margins over the next 2 to 3 years uh you know especially given the change in portfolio mix that we are seeing from your side uh and including you know the competitive intensity that is there in the market so uh, see if mehir uh, you know when we started the year obviously we had estimate of uh, top line growth uh and uh, obviously as we have seen the quarter 1 and quarter 2 the growth was lower than you know that estimate of the industry growth and uh, even if there is there is expectation that third quarter fourth quarter the demand will uh, pick up i think overall growth of the year the top line growth is going to be lower than what we estimated to that an extent uh, there is expected to some impact on the bottom line but i think we have been talking about that our endeavor is to maintain the margin the range of 13 to 14% uh, i think we still stay with that it may be because of the lower revenue growth it may be in the lower side of that range but we still you know our endeavor is to to remain in that range got it sir so lastly uh, i wanted to check on uh, you know two fronts one is the differentiated portfolio i believe it's about 10% how should one think about the differentiated portfolio over the next uh, two to three years will that go up by about 15% uh, and uh, you know the you have also uh, stepped up your uh, you know staff cost materially since 1q um uh, you know uh, uh, so should one expect uh, this to be a phenomena for this year only or do you think that it should it, it can continue for coming years as well to be differentiated products uh, our we have a internal number which i have not tried to speak about it but obviously we want to keep increasing that number uh, uh, now keep increasing that number over a period of uh, you know quarters and year because as we keep doing that it keeps you give you more insulation uh, if you, in comparison to the competition so we have been launching product we'll continue to launch uh, differentiated product and this percentage will take up and up and you know up so our targets are aggressive targets so let's see you know how it, how it goes so, so that's on the uh, for the second question uh, the staff, staff cost, cost uh, uh, Of course, is basically to back up, you know, the initiative what we spoke about. Unfortunately, because the top line growth is low, uh, you know, as and when the market growth picks up, I think that will get absorbed because uh, you know that the cost has gone up because we have, you know, uh, given the support to our initiative. So as the growth goes up, which definitely we believe that coming quarters will be better, and then coming years also will be further better. So I think that will get absorbed. Got it. Thank you very much. That's all from my side. Wishing you all the best. Thank you, Mr. Thank you very much. Before we take the next question, we would like to remind the participants to press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Avi Mehta from Macquarie. Please go ahead. Hi, Hi sir. Uh, sir, I just had one question. Uh, you know, while I understand the near-term weakness that you had cited, but you given uh, you know the healthy growth in industrial segment, given our P N Plus initiatives. could you help us understand how should we look at you know sales growth and ebitda margin as we go beyond this year uh, how do you see these initiatives spanning out or aiding sales growth and ebitda margins that will be useful sir thanks avi so in terms of sales growth as you said that uh, if, uh, you know if we compare with the quarter 1 quarter 2 quarter 3 quarter 4 we are expecting a better growth and gradually it will pick up and therefore our I believe is that when we enter the next year or next two years the growth of the market will be back to in line with gdp or closer to the gdp growth that is what we believe 
because it's very very difficult to assume that for such a long time the market growth can remain down uh, rural market is uh, uh, showing some kind of positive scenario in industrial and i'm sure with this after good monsoons uh, it will show in the decorative also in the urban we believe that you know maybe like you know fmcg is saying urban demand is low but if you see in paints today the project is doing well and project penetration in urban market is very very high so to that extent i think you know even the urban market in the paint industry uh, will hold the demand so i think we feel positive that the demand will pick up and uh, if you see next year or next two years uh, demand will be back back closer to the gdp growth and in terms of our uh, bottom line i think that uh, 13 to 14 percent we maintain uh, you know that uh, that will definitely be based on these initiatives that remain uh, our our range and there we have factored the effect of any new competition also and if the effect of the new competition is less it can become better otherwise you know that whatever we have seen in the market whatever is visible that we have factored and therefore that remains that range remain intact got it sir and sir uh, when you say uh, you know from, i understand the industry growth will probably move towards closer to gdp growth but how would you see it paying out for us would you expect us to continue growing ahead of market or is that how i should kind of build in so if it's if the industry is growing closer to gdp we would be slightly ahead of that is that a fair assessment abhi that's that's our internet target always and uh, in fact you know uh two three years back i think in some of these segments you know we were not doing that okay our growth was a little lower and uh, some initiatives were taken and today we are seeing the result in the new businesses or in the project and because we are under index so i think some difference has been there because of salience part but at the segment level i think we have we have seen that uh, continuously gradually uh, you know we are getting the result and even if we are able to continue this particular pace i think it's a matter of time you know uh, slowly gradually because uh, that will be sustainable and resilient i think you know we should be able to cross map in this okay sir perfect that's all from my side i'll come back in the queue for your questions thank you thank you very much the next question is from the line of darshit vora from asit c mehta investment intermediates please go ahead hello am i audible yes yeah hi thank you for the opportunity and uh, i have a couple of questions some part of that has already been answered but uh, with respect to premiumization trend so uh, what are your thoughts on the continuation of the trend uh, is it going to be as is it is it going to be as it has been guided or uh, do you see uh, and and what do you think about the product mix that is going to change with respect to more premium segment uh, products doing well and you know uh, that entering into the volume numbers okay so premiumization i think last few quarters we have been seeing that the salience is going up and i think that trend uh, will continue and uh, the you know uh, as a premium ones when the premium salience goes up there are two things one the sale of premium itself is going up second i think in the economy segment the sale is little muted now there may be a possibility that when the rural market pick up you know the economy segment or popular segment also start doing well and if that sale pick up i think it is overall good so i think from the sales point of view premium trend will continue from the salience point of view of the economy category picks up so at least if you know the salience could be maintained so so that's my answer to that okay and and with respect to the gross profit margins where do you when do you see them returning to the previous higher levels previous higher levels in the sense that as i said that uh, for the beta margins what we are looking at is between in the range of 13 to 14% and uh, uh, the gross margin as i said that in our case uh, quarter on quarter basis because of the business mix the revenue mix it keeps on changing but at the segment level if we see you know ultimately the right indicator is at the year end so i think keeping in mind that what investment we are doing in capability building marketing and all those things so i think that's how we look at it and uh, mostly because you know that a gross margin could go up but then there are investment which are planned that's why more important is that how ebitda margins we are looking at in the current situation maintaining in the range of 13 14% is how we look at it okay thank you so much and all the best thank you thank you very much before we take the next question we would like to remind participants that you may press star and 1 to ask a question i repeat you may press star and 1 to ask a question the next question is from the line of dheeraj mistri from antic stock broking 
please go ahead yeah hi thank you good morning sir so i just have one question so uh, as you highlighted post the sale until october end there was a good demand uh, for decorative paint so i just wanted to know uh, the region wise demand if you can throw some light on that and also like some of the consumer companies have been highlighting that and even in your presentation there is some moderation in urban market uh and uh, can you give some color on terms of rural demand versus urban demand and whether that has changed compared to previous quarter in this quarter regional level if we talk about the previous quarters i think east and north were you can say a little better and towards the last quarter i think the west uh, picked up when i said october what i said is the uh, shara to diwali because this time diwali was on 31st october last year it was on 12th of november so and uh, extended monsoon so actually pre diwali period uh, the number of days available were very less so within that less period the demand i'm talking about otherwise for the entire month you know because uh, uh, the the period was short so even october is you cannot say it's very good but it's better than the earlier month but i think uh, the demand what you have uh, seen between the shara to diwali and also because there are a lot of marriages uh, you know so marriage season during november december that give us a feeling that you know the demand would be good uh, the the second part you said is uh, urban market urban market lower market in our industry it is visible we are definitely seeing uptick in the demand of two wheeler uh, from the rural and that's how Uh, to, to, to some extent, the two-wheeler demand has gone down in the urban market, but it has gone up in uh, rural market, and that is how the demand is holding. In the decorative, as of now, we have not seen much change. Uh, maybe slight uh, in, in incremental change in uh, rural, but as of now, our data does not indicate much change in the rural and urban. I think uh, next quarter would be a better period, you know, after the monsoon halt pans out. So I think we'll have more clarity, uh, you know, in the next quarter on that. Got it. Thank you. That's it from my side. thank you very much before we take the next question we would like to remind participants that you may press star and one to ask a question the next question is from the line of mr anirudh joshi from icici securities please go ahead yeah so sir uh, uh, two questions from my side first uh, how do you uh, from your long experience in the industry uh, uh, probably what should the industry do right now to revive the growth is it the more discounting required or is it the uh, more brand building efforts uh, will be required at spend etc or more trade push will be required so essentially what should the industry do to uh, get out of this uh, lull period and uh, again means uh, at least we have not seen uh, any such prolonged slowdown period in the paint industry so uh, Uh, probably what should be the guidance in terms of let's say at the industry level in fy26 uh, for the uh, in a way revival in the industry that is question number 1 and then second question is one of the mnc paint player uh, is uh, now almost on the block so what will be concise strategy uh, in in that case means uh, again going for a industrial paint Uh, or industrial coating business uh, of that mnc company will significantly strengthen concise uh, own industrial portfolio also so uh, what are the thoughts on in this regard yeah these are the two questions okay anirudh so a very different question you have asked so i think what industry should do industry should keep patience uh, at this moment of time because our industry has demonstrated for many years the equilibrium the resilience and when the market demand is down so whatever you do um, i don't think that uh, market demand i think market demand will go up automatically because this is something related to a macro factors and it's not uh, industry specific where industry can take any action and uh, you know can this the market discount or those kind of things can only disturb uh, the margins so i think at this moment i want you to accept it uh, that yes market demand is down and few percentage here or there you know for a shorter period time doesn't make difference i think we should wait and we should believe in india story that it's just a matter of time and the market demand uh, will pick up until that time we should keep uh, patience and therefore should be able to maintain uh, equilibrium so that's my answer to your first question second question i have already said uh, near this too early for us to comment upon it uh, as of now that uh, we are navigating our own 
uh, actions and you know seeing that uh, uh, how do we keep accelerating the you know execution of those uh, those particular things our strategy in industrial which we already spoke about because we have a technology available we are working on the approval so we want to continue on that these are some of the changes which are going to happen in the market but i think it's uh, little early for us to comment on the uh, on that particular part okay sure sir this is uh, very helpful thank you thank you thank you very much the next question is from the line of viraj from jupiter financial please go ahead yeah thank you for the opportunity sir uh, my question is with so much so many initiative is it fair to think will be growing in high the I mean uh, high single digits in, from uh, year on which you talked about uh, early and the second question is you mentioned ebitda minus of 13% right that's all yeah. my uh, yeah, yes that's it from my side too. so so initiative if you uh, if you recall if you have heard our earlier uh, presentations <coughs> yeah, and we had a, a situation where you know there was a gap from the market and therefore these initiatives helped us in terms of narrowing the gap and today at the segment level uh, in some segment we are going better some segment we are closer to some segment may, we may still be lower so i think the first step was that you know we narrow the gap and also because today the business is not that simple few years back it used to be pain now pain, within the pain there are too many things uh, are there so sometimes the you know always a direct comparison with one company to other company also is not right what is important for us is that segment by segment you know what initiatives we are uh, taking and what traction we are seeing and as of now we are seeing positive traction and obviously uh, as a company it is always our endeavor to see that we uh, we keep doing better but better on the back of the initiative and because our initiatives are showing us the progress trend the positive traction so we would like to give the patience and keep working on these initiatives so that we are able to get better growth or cause the market growth based on the initiatives okay. any number would you like to put down to that sir no okay thank you thank you thank you very much the next question is from the line of archana menon from morgan stanley please go ahead uh, hi hi sir uh, sir two quick questions uh, first if you could help break down the 1% top line growth for this quarter across segments um, and in terms of both volume and value what would your decorative growth be like uh, relative to the industry this quarter volume growth would be uh, overall volume growth is around 4% equity would be slightly lower and uh, uh, industrial uh, growth is uh, value growth also is positive equity is slightly negative okay so uh, so would you think that uh, your decorative value growth would be at par with the industry this time yeah it should be very close to that as i said you know that uh, uh, we look at the segment segment by segment level and therefore certain segment which are going faster today new business and project business where though we are doing better than the market but our uh, salience is lower under index so some sometime 1 or 2% difference you see because of that particular reason but the segment level will be very close to the market got it thank you so much thank you thank you very much the next question is from the line of yash goenka from aurega capital advisor llp please go ahead hi thank you my question has been answered thank you thank you thank you very much the next question is from the line of mihir shah from nomura please go ahead hi sir thanks for the follow up question uh, so welcome back mihir <laughs> possible to share your uh, saliency uh, sales saliency across uh, north south uh, east west in deco uh, and which markets uh, you know are you seeing an overlap with the new entrant saliency is i have not uh, talk about the numbers but uh, our saliency is uh, very high in north followed by east followed by west and followed by south south we are a weaker player and overlap i think because the new players are also uh, ultimately they are like all india entrant so overlap would be there in all the market okay understood uh, any dealer feedback that you can share uh, in any of the uh, markets that you are hearing you know what what is what is happening out there uh, in in each of the geographies or is the same thing across geographies 
we are not much you know because typically great in fact obviously there is some kind of more energy excitement you know because a lot of talks happening the number of players are increasing uh, as of now i think uh, more than the new entrant the market demand because it has been low and therefore a lot of actions are happening uh, from the existing companies also so the discussions are around that uh, the new entrant i think fine you know because six months nine months and now people have seen that what kind of distribution is coming obviously the products are getting into the market which is a you know i think if we look at 2025 years back there used to be seven eight players in the industry and uh, uh, then maybe uh, after a few years some players exited now we are going back to the same stage where the number of players will increase and to that an extent market will reset even if you see last 10 years some new players have entered uh, maybe they have taken the approach which was more gradual and in that gradual approach also in those states you can see some kind of resetting it has happened so i think here the only thing is that the new entrant is more uh, aggressive and they want to go with the speed so uh, over a period of time i think uh, it, it it just get reset and uh, i would say that the market feedback is the same manner what used to be earlier like you know if you are going to the market there are four people or five people generally people talk about then the competitive scenario what is happening so to the number of players have increased the discussion remains same understood yeah, because you know uh, when the product launch happened the pricing was not materially different in fact we understood that uh, certain uh, geographies uh, the 10% additional volumes were also kind of taken back Uh, while in certain other geographies they continue uh, also secondly you know not much of disruption was seen in the dealer margins uh, lastly one was ex- expecting that during the festive while there was a new ad campaign from their side one was expecting uh, you know some more fire firework uh, you know on uh, uh, in the festive season but that was also not witnessed uh, so that why it uh, had it been so simple you know anyone could have done it it has been so simple you know because the the brand that fire work or that cannot happen uh, overnight and this is what we have been talking about right? we respect the entry of any new player in this industry for the merrier it is good for the industry and uh, uh, we definitely respect the players the kind the quality of players who are entering and i am sure that they will put a good marketing effort which will be good for the entire industry and industry should accept it that you know over a period of time some amount will get reset but that's okay and then i think what is important is that uh, today players are having a different kind of market share maybe at some stage it will get get reset and everybody grow at the right rate uh, grow grow at the right rate in terms of top line and bottom line that is how we should look at it it doesn't happen you know overnight and nothing uh, happen overnight got it so thank you thank you for that uh, again wishing you all the best thank you mr thank you very much As there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Please. Okay, thanks everyone for your questions. Uh, uh, as usual, you know the questions are always uh, good insights, you know that for us. And uh, um, I think uh, we'll continue to work uh, the way uh, what we have been sharing. And looking ahead, uh, I think we are definitely encouraged by the. actions we have taken and we are implementing uh, we would like to accelerate some of the actions where we are seeing a better results coming and these initiatives we believe position us well to achieve better outcome and we are actively tracking to regain you know momentum i want to assure you of uh, the team commitment our commitment to creating long term value and our team is focused on executing this strategy and overcoming near term obstacles and we appreciate your patience and confidence Thank you all everyone greetings again happy new year to you to your family to your friends thanks so much Thank you so much sir On behalf of ICICI Securities that concludes this conference Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines